Well, shalom, shalom. Welcome, welcome, world changers. Tonight we're going to read Ezekiel again, chapters 37 through 42. It's going to be an interesting one because we're going to be talking about the third temple here. So yes, it is going to be an interesting discussion. The third temple, it has not been built yet. So yes, um, just to, guy, to let you guys know as well, I have... Uh, confirmed, I know I've been talking about this for a while, but it is confirmed uh, that Onia is going to be with us, uh, not this Shabbat, but next Shabbat, that will be uh, July 16th, July 16th, Onia will be with us uh, for Shabbat to share his version of the book of Esther, which is going to be a very interesting, a very interesting study as he uh, compares and um, um not just comparing, but showing you the differences between many different, uh, several different manuscripts. So it is going to be an interesting, uh, an interesting uh, live stream, interesting video, that is for sure. So um, in the live chat, we have Kalamentos says, Shalom, everyone. Shalom, Kalamentos. Good to see you. Psalm 94 says, Shalom, Shalom, Psalm 94. Billy says, Shalom, Shalom, Billy. Good to see you guys. Blessings multiplied to you. And my prayer, as always, is that everyone who is listening to this, everyone who will listen to this in the future, the live replays, will be blessed with the reading of the scriptures. And uh, I pray that God would just really open our minds more, our understanding more, that we would know more of him through the scriptures and know more of uh studying the scriptures, just, just know more of the scriptures. So yes, I pray that God's uh, revelation and wisdom and knowledge would be upon us as we read and that we would grow in God. We would grow in the knowledge of him and in the scriptures. Amen. Okay, so let's begin. This is Ezekiel chapter 37. And I'm again, I'm going to be reading from the uh, the W.E.B., that is the World English Bible. Ezekiel chapter 37, starting off with the whole story of the dry bones. And we know that the dry bones represents Israel. And as many understand it, uh, this particular prophecy in Ezekiel chapter 37 was fulfilled in 1948 when uh, when Israel became a nation once again. Israel was revived after nearly 2,000 years of being uh, of being dead, so to speak. Okay, and uh, so it's a wonderful thing that has happened in recent times. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1. Yahweh's hand was on me, and he brought me out in Yahweh's spirit and set me down in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones. He caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and behold, they were dry. He said, uh, he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? I answered, Lord Yahweh, you know. Again, he, he said to me, prophesy over these bones and tell them, you dry bones, hear Yahweh's word. The Lord Yahweh says to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you will live. I will lay sinews on you, and will bring up flesh on you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you will live. And then you will know that I am Yahweh. Gotta love this. We see this this kind of phrase over and over and over and over again in, in the in the book of Ezekiel, isn't it? Then they will know that I am Yahweh. Then, then they will know that I am the Lord. Verse 7, So I prophesied as I was commanded. As I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, there was an earthquake. Then the bones came together to, to its bone. I saw, and behold, 
there were sinews on them, and flesh came up, and skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the wind, prophesy, son of man, and tell the wind, the Lord Yahweh says, come from the four winds, breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up on their feet, an exceedingly great army. He said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are completely cut off. Therefore, prophesy and tell them. The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves, my people, and I bring you into the land of Israel. You will know that I am Yahweh when I have opened your graves and caused you to come up out of your graves, my people. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. Then I will place you in your own land and you will know that I, Yahweh, have spoken it and performed it, says Yahweh. Yahweh's word came to me again, came again to me, saying, You son of man, take one stick and write on it, Judah, and for the children of Israel's companions. Then take another stick and write on it, for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all, for all the house of Israel, his companions. Then join them for yourself to one another into one stick that they may become one in your hand. When the children of, of your people speak to you, saying, Won't you show us what you, what you mean by these? Tell them, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his companions, and I will put them with it, with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they will be one in my hand. The sticks on which you write will be in your hand before their eyes. Say to them, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations where they have gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel. One king will be king to them all. They will no longer be two nations. They won't be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. They won't defile themselves any more with, with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places in which they have sinned and will cleanse them. So they will be my people and I will be their God. My servant David will be king over them. They all will have one shepherd. They will also walk in my ordinances and observe my statutes and do them. They will dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant, in which your fathers lived. They will dwell therein, they and their children and their children's children forever. David, my servant, will be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It will be an everlasting covenant with them. I will place them, multiply them, and will set my sanctuary among them forever. My tent also will be with them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. The nations will know that I am Yahweh, who sanctifies Israel when my sanctuary is among them forevermore. Ezekiel chapter 38. Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, uh, Meshach, excuse me, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against them, and say, The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am against you, Gog, prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks into your jaws, and will bring you out with all your army, horses 
and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great company with buckler and shield, all of them handling swords. Persia, Kush, and Put with them, all of them with shield and hel helmet. Gomer and his hordes, the house of Togarma in the uttermost parts of the north and all his hordes, even many peoples with you. Be prepared. Yes, prepare yourself, you and all your companies who are assembled to you, and be a guard to them. After many days you will be visited. In the latter years you will come into the land that is brought back from the sword that is gathered out of many peoples on the mountains of Israel, which have been a continual waste. But it is brought out of the peoples, and they will dwell securely, all of them. You will ascend. You will come like a storm. You will, you will be a cloud over the land, you and all your hordes, and many peoples with you. The Lord Yahweh says, It will happen in that day that things will come into your mind, and you will devise an evil plan. You will say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to those who are at rest, who dwell securely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates, to take plunder and to take prey, to turn your hand against the waste places that are inhabited and against the people who are gathered out of the nations, who have gotten livestock and goods, who dwell in the middle of the earth. Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish, with all its young lions, will ask you, have you come to, to take the plunder? Have you assembled your company to take the prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, to take great plunder? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and tell Gog, the Lord Yahweh says, In that day when my people Israel dwell securely, you will, will you not know it? You will come from your place and out of the uttermost parts of the north. You and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company and a mighty army. You will, you will come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It will happen in the latter days that I will bring you against my land, that the nations may know me when I am sanctified in you, Gog, before their eyes. The Lord Yahweh says, Are you he who of whom I spoke in old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied in those days for years that I would bring you against them? It will happen in that day when Gog comes against comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord Yahweh, that my wrath will come up into my nostrils. And, or excuse me, for in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there will be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the animals of the field, all creeping things who creep on the earth, and all the men who are on the surface of the earth will shake at my presence. Then the mountains will be thrown down, the steep places will fall, and every wall will fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against him to all my mountains, says the Lord Yahweh. Every man's sword will be against his brother. I will, I will enter into judgment with him with pestilence and with blood. I will rain on him on his hordes, and on the many peoples who are with him, torrential rains with great hailstones, fire, and sulfur. I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will make myself known in the eyes of many nations. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. Ezekiel chapter 39. You, son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am against you, Gog, prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal. I will turn you around, will lead you on, and will cause you to come up from the uttermost parts of the north, and I will bring you on the mountains of Israel. I will strike your 
your bow out of your left hand and will cause your arrows to fall out of your right hand. You will fall on the mountains of Israel, you and all your hordes and the peoples who are with you. I will give you to the ravenous birds of every sort and to the animals of the field to be devoured. You will fall in the open field, for I have spoken it, says the Lord Yahweh. I will send a fire on Magog and on those who dwell securely in the islands. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. I will make my holy name known among my people Israel. I won't allow my holy name to be profaned anymore. Then the nations will know that I am Yahweh, the Holy One in Israel. Behold, it comes, and it will be done, says the Lord Yahweh. This is the day about which I have spoken. Those who dwell in the cities of Israel will go out and will make fires of the weapons and burn them, both the shields and the bucklers, the the bows and the arrows, and the war clubs and the spears, and they will make fires with them for seven years, so that they will take no wood out of the field and and not cut down any out of the forest, for they will make fires with the weapons. They will plunder those who plundered them and rob those who robbed them, says the Lord Yahweh. It will happen in that day. I will give to Gog a place for burial in Israel, the valley of those who pass through on the east of the sea, and it will stop those who pass through. They will bury Gog and all his multitude there, and they will call it the valley of Hamon Gog. The house of Israel will be burying them for seven months that they may cleanse the land. Yes, all the people of the land will bury them and they will become famous in that in the day that I will be glorified, says the Lord Yahweh. They will set apart men of continual employment who will pass through the land. Those who pass through will go with those who bury those who remain on the surface of the land to cleanse it. After the end of seven months, they will search. Those who search through the land will pass through. And when anyone sees a man's bone, then he will set up a sign by it until the undertakers have buried it in the valley of Hamon Gog. Hamona will also be the name of a city. Thus, they will cleanse the land. You, son of man, The Lord Yahweh says, Speak to the birds of every sort and to every animal of the field. Assemble yourselves and come. Gather yourselves on to my sacrifice that I sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice on the mountains of Israel, that you may meet and drink blood. You shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, of goats, of bulls, all of them fatlings of Bashan. Now, let me stop here for just a second here. This is another one of many, many, many uh, examples of, this is not to be taken literally, of course, okay? So what does this mean to eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth and, and, and so on and so forth? Of course, this is not literal because this is against the law of God to do it, literally. This is the reason why, you know, in the Gospel of John, for example, you know, in in chapters 5, 6, we have when Yeshua was talking about, you know, unless someone eats my flesh and drinks my blood, you will have no part of me. And it's like, there was like thousands there and everybody left. Even, like, everybody left, except for the 12. And he turned to them and said, are you going to leave too? Why did they leave? Because I can just imagine them. I can just imagine, I can just hear them talking. Like, what kind of rabbi is this? He's teaching people against the Torah. The Torah says not to drink blood. Of course, it's not literal. See, this is the problem. A lot of people take it literally. This is this, it doesn't mean literally. Eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth. That's talking about basically just um being victorious over them in war. And so that's really what it's talking about. Take like getting the um try to word it properly, get it uh partaking in the advantage of 
what God God's judgment upon them is. Okay, it's to their advantage. Okay, so they're not they're not literally eating flesh of humans. It's not cannibalism or drinking their blood. God forbid. They're not doing that. It's it's a figure of speech. And by the way, the Tower Times says, Shalom and howdy, brothers and sisters. Bless y'all. Shalom, Tower Time. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Blessings multiplied to you. Cat Cool says, Shalom, Shalom, Matthew. Good to see you, Cat Cool. The Great Deception says, Shalom, everyone. Shalom, Alan. Good to see you. Vinny says, Shalom, everyone. Shalom, Vinny. Good to see you. Seems like three angels is a troll. So three angels, if you are honest, if you are honest, three angels, and you really want to do, you really want God's truth to be made known, stick around to the end. I have, I have a couple questions for you. Okay, so in the meantime, let's go on reading. This is Ezekiel chapter nine, chapter, excuse me, chapter 39, verse 19. You shall eat you shall eat fat until you are full and drink blood until you, until you are drunk. Now again, this is not literal, right? Because I mean nobody gets drunk on blood. <laughs> I mean not literally. Of my sacrifice which I have sacrificed for you. You shall be filled at my table with horses and charioteers, with mighty men and with all men of war, says the Lord Yahweh. I will set my glory among the nations. Then all the nations will see my judgment that I have executed and my hand that I have laid on them. So the house of Israel will know that I am Yahweh their God from that day and forward. The nations will know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they transgressed against me. And I hid my face from them. So I gave them into the hand of their adversaries, and they all fell by the sword. I did to them according to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions. I hid my face from them. Verse 25. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Now I will re reverse the captivity of Jacob and have mercy on the whole house of Israel. I will be ze uh, jealous for my holy name. They will forget their shame and all their trespasses by which they have trespassed against me when they dwell securely in their land. No one will make them afraid. When I have, when I have brought them back from the peoples, gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and am shown holy among them in the sight of many nations, they will know that I am Yahweh their God in that I caused them to go into captivity among the nations and have gathered them to their own land. Then I will leave none of them captive anymore. I won't hide my face from, from them anymore, for I have poured out my spirit on the house of Israel, says the Lord Yahweh. Ezekiel chapter 40. Okay, so this is... All right, we're getting in closer to the time of when it talks about the um, the third temple. Um, so in the next few chapters, we'll get into that. In the 25th year of our captivity, in the beginning of the year, in the 10th day of the month, in the 14th day, in the 14th year after, this, after the city was struck, in the same day, Yahweh's hand was on me and he brought me there in the visions of god he brought me into the into the land of israel and set me down on a very high mountain on which was something like the frame of a city to the south he brought me there and behold there was a man whose appearance was like the, the appearance of bronze with a line of flask flax in his hand and a measuring reed and he stood in the gate the man said to me, Son of man, see with your eyes and hear with your ears and set your heart on all that I will show you. For you have been brought here so that I may show them to you. 
Declare all that you see to the house of Israel. Let me just pause here for a second. Just as a quick reminder for those who are joining us, um, I'm going to be reading this chapter and a couple other chapters, and then we're going to get right into the live chat, and I'm going to be interacting with you. So uh, if any of you have a special, like if you have a question directed specifically uh, to me, just put at Christopher in the live chat, and I will get to that right after this reading. But this is going to be an interesting reading. Not only are we going to read about this vision here in Ezekiel chapter 40, but we're also getting into the chapters about the third temple, like what's going to happen in the end. And so we know that in the end times, the temple will be rebuilt. That's what they call the third temple. And very interesting, very, very interesting details about that temple we're going to read about in just a moment. So, so uh, again, if you have any questions, please just put them in the live chat uh, directed uh, at Christopher, if if you are asking me specifically. Let's get back to Ezekiel chapter 40, verse 5. Again, I'll read the rest of this chapter, 41 and 42, and then I will jump right into the live chat with you guys, and we'll we'll uh, we'll hash some of this stuff out. If you have any other questions, you know, we're here to talk. We're here to talk. Behold, there was a wall on the outside of the house all around, And in the man's hand, a measuring reed, six cubits long. So a cubit is a a foot and a half. It's 18 inches. So six cubits long would be nine feet long of a cubit and a half, excuse me, and a cubit and a hand width each. Okay, so that'd be a little bit longer then. Um, Okay, so it explains here, a a normal cubit is the length of the tip of the middle finger to the elbow of a man's arm, about 18 inches or 46 centimeters. A hand breadth is about 4.3 inches or 11 centimeters. So the long cubit described here would be about 22.3 inches or 57 centimeters long. Thus, a six long cubit measuring reed would would have been around three yards, 26.6 inches or about 3.42 meters long. Well, that's pretty specific, isn't it? So he measured the thickness of the building, one reed, and the height, one reed. Then he came to the gate, which looks toward the east, and went up its steps. He measured the threshold of the gate, one reed wide, and the other threshold, one reed wide. Every lodge was one reed long and one reed wide, between the lodges was five cubits. The threshold of the gate by the porch of the gate toward the house was one reed. He measured also the porch of the gate toward the house, one reed. Then he measured the porch of the gate, eight cubits and its posts, two cubits, and the porch of the gate was toward the house. The side rooms of the gate eastward were three on on this side and three on that side. The three of them were of one measure. The posts had one measure on this side and on that side. He measured the, the width of the opening of the gate, 10 cubits, and the length of the gate, 13 cubits. And the border before the lodges, one cubit on this side and a border, one cubit on that side, and... The side room, six cubits on this side and six cubits on that side. He measured the gate from the roof of the one side room of the roof to the other, a width of 25 cubits, door against door. He also made posts, six, 60 cubits, and a court reached to the posts around the gate. From the forefront of the gate at the entrance of or the entrance to the forefront of the inner porch of the gate, were 50 cubits. There were closed windows to the side rooms and to their posts within the the gates all around, and likewise to the arches. Windows were around inward. Palm trees were on each post. Then he brought me into the outer court. Behold, there were rooms and a pavement made for the court all around. Thirty rooms were on the pavement. The pavement was 
by the side of the gates corresponding to the length of the gates, even the lower pavement. Then he measured the width from the forefront of the lower gate to the forefront of the inner court outside 100 cubits, both on the east and on the north. He measured the length of the width of the gate of the outer court, which faces toward the north. The lodges of it were three on this side and three on that on that side. Its posts and its archers were the same as the measure of the first gate. Its length was 50 cubits and the width 25 cubits. Its windows, its arches, and its palm trees were, of the, were the same as the measure of the gate which faces toward the east. They went up to it by seven steps. Its arches were before them. There was a gate to the inner court facing the outer gate on the north and on the east. He measured 100 cubits from the gate. He led me toward the south, and behold, there was a gate toward the south. He measured its posts and its arches according to these measurements. There were windows in it and in its arches all around, like the like the other windows, the length of fifty cubits and the width of and the width twenty-five cubits. There were seven steps to go up to it, and its arches were before them. It had palm trees one on this side and another on that side on its posts. There was a gate to the inner court toward the south. He measured 100 cubits from, the, from gate to gate toward the south. Then he brought me into the, or to the inner court by the south gate. He measured the south gate according to these measurements, with its lodges, its posts, and its arches. According to the to measurements, there were windows in it and, its, and in its arches all around. It was 50 cubits long and 25 cubits wide. There were arches all around 25 cubits long and, and 5 cubits wide. Its arches were toward the outer court. Palm trees were on its posts. The ascent to it had eight steps. He brought me in, into the inner court toward the east. He measured the gate according to these measurements, with its lodges, its posts, and its arches according to these measurements. There were windows in it and in its arches all around. It was 50 cubits long and 25 cubits wide. Its arches were toward the outer court. Palm trees were on its posts on this side, that side. The ascent to it had eight steps. He brought me to the north gate and he measured it according to his measurements, its lodges, its posts, and its arches. There were windows in it all around. The length was 50 cubits and its width 25 cubits. Its posts were toward the outer court. Palm trees were on its posts on this side and on that side. The, the ascent to it had eight steps. A room with its door was by the posts at the gates. They washed the burnt offering there. In the, in the porch of the gate were two tables on this side and two on that side, on which to kill the burnt offering, the sin offering, and the trespass offering. On the one side, outside, as far as one goes up to the entry of the gate toward the north, were two tables. And on the other side, which belonged to the porch of the gate, were two tables. Four tables were on this side and four tables on that side by the side of the gate. Eight tables on which they killed sacrifices. There were four stones, stone tables there for, for the burnt offering a cubit and a half long, a cubit and a half wide, and one cubit high. They laid the instruments with which they killed the burnt offering and the sacrifice on them. The hooks, a hand width long, were fastened within all around. The meat of the offering was on the tables. Outside of the inner gate were rooms for the singers in the, court, in the inner court, which was at the side of the north gate. They faced toward the south. At once, uh, one at the side of the east gate faced toward the, toward the north. He said to me, this room, which faces toward the south, is for the priests who perform the duties of the house. The room which faces toward the north is for the priests who perform the, duties, the duty of the altar. These are the sons of Sadok. For those who, who are not familiar uh, with the Hebrew, Zadok is, is a variation of the Hebrew word, which means 
righteous. Very good word. Their name, I should say. So these are the sons of Zadok, whom from who from among the sons of Levi, Levi come near to Yahweh to minister to him. He measured the court 100 cubits long and 100 cubits wide square. The altar was before the house. He brought me to the porch of the house and measured each post of the porch, five cubits on this side and five cubits on that side. The width of the gate was three cubits on this side and three cubits on that side. The length of the porch was 20, 20 cubits and the width 11 cubits. Even by the steps by which they went up to it. There were pillars by the posts, one on this side, one on this side, and, and another on that side. Ezekiel chapter 41. He brought me to the nave and measured the posts, six cubits wide on the one side and six cubits wide on the other side, which was the width of the tent. The width of the entrance was ten cubits. Again, here a cubit is the length of a, the tip of the middle finger to the elbow, to the elbow on a man's arm, or about eighteen inches or forty-six uh, centimeters. So the width of the entrance was ten cubits. So that would be about fifteen feet, and the sides of the entrance were five cubits on one side and five cubits on the other side. He measured its length forty cubits and and the width twenty cubits. Then he went inward and measured each post of the entrance, two cubits and the, and the entrance, six cubits, and the width of the entrance, seven cubits. He measured its length, 20 cubits, and the width, 20 cubits, before the nave. He said to me, this is the most holy place. Then he measured the wall of the house, six cubits, and the width of every side room, four cubits, all around the house on every side. The side rooms were in three stories, one over another, and 30 in each story. They entered into the wall, belonged to the house for the side rooms all around, that they might be supported and not penetrate the wall of the house. The side rooms were wider on, on the higher levels because the walls were narrower and uh, at the higher levels. Therefore, the width of the house increased upward and so one went up from the lowest level to the highest through the middle level. I saw also that the house had a raised base all around. The foundations of the side rooms were a full reed of six, six great cubits. The thickness of the upper wall of the side rooms was five cubits. That which was left was the place on, uh, of the side rooms that belonged to the house. Between the rooms was a width of 20 cubits around the house on every side. The doors of the side rooms were toward an open area that was left. One door toward the north and another door toward the south. The, the width of the open area was five cubits all around. The building that was bef before the separate place at the side toward the west was 70 cubits wide and the wall of the building was five cubits thick all around, and its length 90 cubits. Wow, this is a large, large temple. This is a large temple. So he measured the temple 100 cubits long. Now again, using the short cubit, this would be 150 feet long. And the separate place and the building with its walls 100 cubits long. So that's another 100 so that's 150 feet long there. Uh, also, the width of the face of the temple and of the separate place toward the, the east, 100 cubits, 100 cubits. He measured the length of the building before the separate place, which was at its back, and its galleries on one side and on the other side, 100 cubits from the inner temple and the porches of the court, the thresholds and the closed windows and the galleries around on their three stories, opposite the, the, the threshold, with wood ceilings all around, and from the ground up to the windows. Now the windows were covered. To the space above the door, even the, the inner house, and outside, and by all 
the wall all around inside and outside by measure. It was made with cherubim and palm trees. A palm tree was between cherub and cherub, and every cherub had two faces, so that there was a face of a man toward the palm tree on the one side and a face of a young lion toward the palm tree on the other side. It was made like this through all the house all around. Cherubim and palm trees were made from the ground to the above or to above the door. The wall of the temple was like this. The doorposts of the nave were squared. As for the face of the nave, its apparent its appearance was as the appearance of the temple. The altar was of wood, three cubits high, and its length two cubits. Its corners, its base, and its walls were of wood. He said to me, this is the table that is before Yahweh. The temple of the sanctuary had two doors. The doors had two leaves each, two turning leaves, two for the one door and two leaves for the other. There were made on them, on the doors of the nave, cherubim and palm trees, like those made on the walls. There was a threshold of wood on the face of the north, or excuse me, of the porch outside. There were closed windows and palm trees on the one side and on the other side, on the sides of the porch. This is how the side rooms of the temple and the thresholds were arranged. Ezekiel chapter 42. Then he brought me into the outer court, the way toward the north. Then he brought me into the room that was opposite the separate place and which was opposite the building toward the north. Facing the length of 100 cubits was the north door and the width was 50 cubits. Opposite the the 20 cubits, which belonged to the inner court and opposite the pavement, which belonged to the outer court, was gallery against gallery in the three stories. Before the rooms was a walk of 10 cubits width inward as a way, excuse me, a way of one cubit and their doors were toward the north. Now the upper rooms were shorter for the, the galleries took away from these more than from the lower and the middle in the building. For they were in three stories and they didn't have pillars as the pillars of the courts. Therefore, the uppermost was set back more than the lower, excuse me, more than the lowest and the middle from the ground. The wall that was outside by the side of the rooms toward the outer court before the rooms was 50 cubits long. For the length of the rooms that were in the outer court was 50 cubits. Behold, those facing the temple were 100 cubits. From under these rooms was the entry on the east side as one goes into them from the outer court. In the thickness of the wall of the court toward the east, before the separate place and before the building, there were rooms. The way before them was like the the appearance of the rooms which were toward the north. Their length and width were the same. All their exits had the same arrangement and doors, like the doors of the rooms that were toward the south was, was a door at the head of the way even the way directly before the wall toward the east as one enters into them. Then he said to me, the north rooms and the south rooms, which are opposite the separate place, are holy rooms where the, where the priests who are near to Yahweh shall eat the most holy things. There they shall lay the most holy things with the meal offering, the sin offering, the trespass offering, for the place is holy. When the priests enter in, they shall, go, they shall not go out of the holy place into the outer court until they lay their garments in which they minister there, for they are holy. Then they shall put on the other garments and shall approach that which is for the people. Now, when, they had, when he had finished measuring the inner house, he brought me out by the, by the way of the gate which faces toward the east and measured it all around. He measured on the east side with the measuring uh, measuring reed of 500 reeds with the measuring reed all around. He measured on the north side 500 reeds with the measuring reed all around. He measured on the south side 500 reeds with the measuring reed. He turned about to the west side and measured 500 reeds with the measuring reed. He measured on it four sides. 
it had a wall around it, the length of 500 cubits and the width of 500 cubits, to make a separation between that which was holy and that which was common. And that concludes our reading for Scripture today. Now, before I get in, tomorrow, Lord willing, we'll continue this, okay? And so, so far we've read a lot of detail, as you know, about the third temple. Measurements and you know exactly how it looked and so on and so forth. Here's the thing. The temple is for one thing in particular. It's, it's for several things, but especially it says the tables for the sacrifices and so on and so forth. So there are going to be sacrifices. And this is the word of the Lord. Excuse me. There are going to be sacrifices. When the third temple is built, it is the Lord's will for sacrifices to to be made. In spite of what a lot of Christians say is that, you know, Jesus was our ultimate and last sacrifice. There's no, you know, and no more sacrifices after Jesus. Well, that's not what the scripture says. And even in the book of Acts, we have we have clues there that the that the apostles, the disciples, the believers, the Christians, those involved in quote unquote the way did agree to still continue to sacrifice animal sacrifices in the book of Acts after the cross, after the resurrection, after the ascension. So, yeah, very, very interesting. And again, tomorrow, Lord willing, we're going to get into more detail on that. So let's see what we have here in the live chat. Abril says, Shalom, uh, Christopher and everyone else. Shalom, Abril, good to see you. Welcome. And Jordan as well says, Shalom all. Shalom, Jordan. Good to see you, brother. Tammy says, hit that like button. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. So. Three angels. Uh, okay. Three angels. You're, you're, you're here again. Okay. So you said that. Okay, so what? let me ask you a question. What is a false teacher? Okay, so we're, we're, we're not a kind of people that like to slander other people. I'd like to know what false teacher means. What is it? Can you define false teacher? Can you define that? I would like a good definition of that. So in the meantime, yes, um, I, again, on the 16th, we will have Onia back with us and uh, I am working. I know I've been saying this for a while, but please bear with me. I am working on uh, a string of other live guests. I know we've, we've kind of taken a break here for the past few weeks on some, uh, some guests on our live stream, but I'm going to get back in the swing of it's, it's going to happen, Lord willing. And so, uh, Yes, uh, we're looking forward to getting back into that as well as, and I have been talking with a few other people, even just before, just before I went live today, I've been talking to a few other people who, um, um, who is going to be Lord willing, uh, live with us uh, in the next few weeks. I'm planning hoping <laughs> in within the next few weeks, live with us music wise musicians. Okay. And so Lord willing in, in the next few weeks, we will have those musicians to get together, to praise God, to praise the Lord and, uh, and to sing the blessings of God, to sing it as just as Jesus did, you know, just as Jesus did, just as the disciples did in the book of Acts. You know, I mean, we'll, we'll, I'm going to be part of it, Lord willing, okay, and uh, be writing some some songs as well. And uh, but some of it will be complete psalms, complete psalms. I'm, you know, a lot of we see so much of this happening anymore in uh, in the hymn, you know, Christian hymn hymnals, the church hymnals, and contemporary Christian music where they they you know cherry pick verses, their favorite verses over you know here and there, and then they write a song about it. No. 
what we're going to do, not, I mean, I'm not saying every song is going to be like that, but we're going to be singing the Psalms. When we sing a Psalm, when we sing a Psalm, at least I want to sing the whole Psalm, the whole Psalm. And so Lord willing, in the next few, uh, within the next few weeks, perhaps a little earlier than that, we'll have live music as well. What I mean by live music, I'm talking about not just Hannah, I'm talking about a guitarist, talking about um, singers and a violinist and uh, and some percussion and drums as well. So really looking forward to that. Um, three angels. Again, you appear to be a very malicious person in the sense that you are coming here slandering and you're not answering my question. I'm going to give you one more chance. You use this slur called false teacher. Define it. Define it. Define it. Otherwise, we are all just going to dismiss you as, as not just a, <laughs> as a slanderer, okay? By the way, according to, uh, there's a, there's a uh, specific, um, um, uh, there's a man, a uh, gentleman by the name of Dr. Dr. Mori, and he, uh, he says that according to the scriptures, slander is one of the worst sins. I mean, God speaks more against slander than, and then uh, against any other. You said you already blocked me. Who are you? What was your other screen name? Apparently, you're a very disturbed individual if you're going from one burner account to another burner account just to be malicious against other people, against other believers. And not only are you a slanderer, but you're also a false witness and a liar. I mean, you call, you're, you're calling me a Satanist, posing as a believer to take, uh, no, I mean, no, we, it's, it's, you're absurd. You are, you, you have problems. Okay. Go, go see a psychiatrist. Um, Far from it. Uh, you know, we preach and we we believe in service and worship to worship and serve the Lord only. Satanists would... You want to find Satanists, I'm telling you, Satanists are not going to be telling you to be to to be obedient to God and to and to be obedient to his commands, which we are more so than probably most people who who, uh, you know, who name the name of, of Christ or name the name of God. Um, Satan wants you to be a dis, you know, to be disobedient, not to be obedient. You know, we see that right from the very beginning, right from the very beginning. Yes. Vinny says slandering is like murdering some, someone's reputation. And that is evil. And we condemn it at every turn. What you're doing, three angels, and your little burner account that you you have there is 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 wicked and evil. It's way more satanic than anything else that anybody's ever said on here. By the way, did you know that the word Satan is synonymous with the word slanderer? Yeah, so... So I already blocked you and uh, and you come back again because you're so disturbed. You know what? You know why you're disturbed? Because it's the truth. That's why. That's why you're disturbed because it's the truth and you are you're a sold out to lies. So, you know what? You get what you deserve. 
Okay, so um, yes, another more. Uh, it's 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 pretty early, isn't it? Yes. So, um, any more questions or, or comments? Uh, let me know in the live chat, and um, and I'll get to them just before I close out. But uh, yeah, it's 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 been an, an awesome time of reading as usual. People don't like it when I kind of think outside of the box. A lot of people want to be conformed to their own little, you know, their own little shell, their own little social group. Excuse me, their own little denomination. But hey, I think God is bigger than that. I think God is is outside of the box. So that's why we think outside the box. All right. Billy says, what are your thoughts on the Shroud of Turin? Okay, um, I, I lean toward it being authentic. I lean toward it being authentic. And, and I word it that way because, you know, you know, for the most part, you can't be 100% certain on a lot of things, if not everything. You know, they say in, in, in philosophy, there's no such thing as 100% certain, you know, Um Virtually certain is 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 basically the top of the list, which is not a hundred percent. So yeah, um, I from from everything that I've seen and uh, and 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 heard of the studies and um, you know the tests that has that have been done on it, uh, it it it, um, it 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 seems to be authentic. That's what I would say. Very good, uh, very good question, Billy. Thank you for asking. Psalm 94 says, I don't think they like this teaching. They can join the Paulians. Yeah, probably since I already blocked that person, it, you know, according to their own admission, must be one of those that has. Very disturbed individual. Very disturbed. But you know what? Even Yeshua, even Yeshua had to deal with very disturbed individuals, right? Tammy says, I have a few questions we'll ask in, in different messages. Too long? Okay. All right. Yeah, so, yes, I will be looking in again. Tammy, I just want to confirm with you. I know I said this before, but... Uh, in the meantime, I will be looking into Dr. Mason as well as Dr. Tabor, um, as well as some other ones as well. I'm I'm looking at uh, there's there was one that I was almost going to invite, but um, you know, just it just didn't happen. So, um, okay, I'm not sure, Tammy, if you're going to be submitting those questions. Or not? Uh, just in the in a few moments here, while we're just waiting, just before we wrap up, I just want to share a little bit too, a little bit more of what's on my mind. I know, I know, on Shabbat, I, I did mention this, but uh, I was talking to someone earlier, and um, I, I, it, it's it's something that's kind of um, pressing in the back of my mind, so so to speak, and that is the. Uh, the truth of uh, of the lessons that we read in four Maccabees, four Maccabees, and basically, if if you guys, if you've never read four Maccabees, like we we will we'll uh, we'll get to it, Lord willing, we will get to it uh, shortly here. But um, four Maccabees is a wonderful, wonderful account of the uh, the importance of reason, reason. You know, there's a lot of things that are happening in the world today that are just without good reason. You know what I mean? So a lot of people do things just out of, you know, spare the moment or just because they just out of feelings, but not because of good reason. I believe that God is a reasonable God and he operates by reason. I think that reason is part of his character. I think unreasonable 
behavior is part of the enemy's character, okay? And uh, it's just so important to understand that, that God, you know, because in the world today, you know, they have their reasons, talk about reasons, they have their reasons, they they have, you know, they have their points of why they believe this, and I understand why they believe this, dealing with some of the people that I do, and I'm not talking about on this pl- platform, but sometimes on other, other platforms where people are just so unreasonable, and, you know, it's just... But uh, uh, the world looks at Christians. And I'm not saying everybody, but some, you know, a good, a good part of the world looks at Christians as being people that are not very well educated, or you know what I mean. Like they're not using their their brains very well in many things, and they're just believing naively into, you know, into what they call fairy tales or whatever else. But um, but really, the opposite is true. The more you learn, the more you read, the more you think, and you you really put some really good, godly, critical thinking into practice. Wow! I mean, you'll really pull out some treasure. And reason is is powerful. So one of these days, I will, you know, we'll do it anyway in our chronological uh, Bible reading, but. Readings for Maccabees is amazing. And for those of you who don't know, um, for Maccabees is not very easy to come by. Um, this particular website that I was reading from, which is ebible.org, it has for Maccabees on it. I'll just, I'll just go here and show you guys. I go to ebible.org. And uh, so I'm just, I'm just zoomed in here, but you go down on the left-hand side, You'll see where it says World English Bible there. Click on that, and you got in the green is the Tanakh, okay, or the so called Old Testament. And then the brown is the Apocrypha. And here they have four Maccabees. Uh, some uh, like Catholic Bibles, for example, they would have first and second Maccabees. But like books like three Maccabees and four Maccabees are hard to come by, but here you can get it and read it. So the book of four, the fourth book of Maccabees um, is just an amazing, an amazing book. It's like the introduction here, the fourth book of Maccabees appears to be an appendix to the Greek Septuagint. It is considered to be a, a apocrypha by most church, uh, church traditions. It is preserved here for its supplementary historical value. It's an, it's an amazing book. And again, the, the moral of the story of four Maccabees is how important it is to use reason, good reason, how God uses that, how he works through that. It's just amazing. Okay. Let's see what we have here in the live chat. Okay, so Tammy asked the question, is it common for uh, for in ancient times for men to sleep in the same beds? I travel all over the U.S. and run into all people. So if not, why does it say there will be two men sleeping in the same bed and one will be taking the other left? Very good. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, okay, so the other one is, uh, also traveled with the Kabbalist or Kabbalist uh, for a couple years, and also and also in the book of Luke, the lamp of the body is the eye. If the eye is good, the whole body good. They preach third eye, and use that to confirm beliefs. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's talk about the first one here first. Um, yeah, so where it says two men sleeping in the same bed. You look at it in the original manuscripts, the word men is in italics, which means it's not even in the original manuscripts. Let me show you. Uh, let's go over here again, pull up our, um, oh, we'll go to the KJV here for this one. Okay, so two men, oops, what am I doing here? Two men, uh, bed. Okay, so Luke chapter 17, verse 34 I tell you that it, that uh, excuse me in that night there shall be two. Uh, there we go. Men is in italics there, so really it doesn't say men. 
it just says there shall be two in one bed. So there could be a man and a woman in one bed and, and one shall be taken, the other shall be left. So very good question, Tammy. Um, yeah, there's the key right there in the italics. Um, the other thing you asked about, uh, so the third eye teaching. Um, yeah, so in the Luke where it says the eye is the lamp of the body, where the whole body is good. Um, so the way I understand this is like the eye, you know, we have your, what I what I would call like the eye gate and the ear gate, okay? A couple of, you could say that we have other gates as well, like, you know, maybe you can say the mouth gate or something. Like that. But the eye gate and the ear gate just... Um, so when the eye is good, in other words, when you are... When you are focused on good things, your whole body, I don't, and I, I don't take that in a physical sense. I take that in a spiritual sense so that your whole body is good. Um, like, I mean, like, I believe that what, 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 what Yeshua is saying there is that as long as we're focused on, as long as we have our eyes, figuratively speaking, on good things, uh, it's going to fill us with good things. We will be... Um, like it says, you know, in uh, like Paul said, if you you know think on these things, whatever is good and whatever is pure, whatever is admirable and you know wholesome and all these things, uh, dwell on these things. So I think that that's what Yeshua was just basically saying that your eye is a gate to your soul, the, maybe even like the body of your soul, so to speak. Um, yeah, I, I've never looked at it like from the point of view of being like the third eye. Um, because I think that it can have that connection to the physical realm is like, like if you have your physical eyes on good things and you keep them away from bad things, and that's definitely going to affect your, your spiritual body and your emotional body, so to speak, and everything. Right. So, uh, that's how I look at that. I, I don't look at that from, um, like from that kind of point of view of it, like the spiritism or the Kabbalist point of view. Uh, so yeah, very good question, Tammy. I hope that's, uh, hope that answers your question. Thank you for asking as always. Brick Train says, four Maccabees is in the new revised standard version. I love it. I love it too. It's awesome. It is really awesome. I'm looking forward to getting into this stuff. And again, the um, it, what I have in my mind right now, like the uh, the goal, uh, what did I say? The outlook, I guess, of of the, these live streams. Okay, apart from our uh, Sabbath meetings and our special guests, and you know, Lord willing, some some different live music, you know, with different live musicians joining us. Um, Apart from that, um, going through the Bible in a roughly chronological way, and I say roughly because sometimes it's hard to tell uh, exactly when a book was written or that kind of thing, but we're doing it to the best of our ability and, and maintain flow. And so the idea is to go through the entire Tanakh, the entire um, Apocrypha, especially all the Apocrypha that is listed in the uh, uh, the um, um, e Bible, like all of these books here, Tobit, Judith, you know, in uh, about a week and a half, we'll get to the Greek Esther with Onia, Wisdom of Solomon, awesome book, Sirach, awesome book. They're all awesome books. They're all awesome books. First Ezra, Second Ezra. You guys know Second Ezra is just an amazing book. Prayer of Manasseh. It's all. It's all really, really good. So I, it's my goal to go through every single one of these books, um, and then some, and then some. We'll get into some other, uh, some extra, extra biblical material as well. And after we do that, just before we get back into the New Testament, for the second time in a row. I mean, the second time, second lap, so to speak. Uh, we'll just have a special celebration and a special online celebration of um of you know um 
of just what we've what we went through. So, Lord willing, we'll do that. All right. Tammy says, uh, could the book of Luke intertwine with Kabbalistic messages? Uh, how do you feel about the Kabbalah? I found it to be witchcraft. I, I don't know a whole lot about the Kabbalah. Okay, so I, I know, I, I have a general gist of what it, it's about. And so I, without knowing all the details, um, I, I, yeah, I can't really comment on that, Tammy. But uh, yeah, I appreciate I appreciate your point of view and I appreciate you sharing this. Um, Alan says Kabbalah equals bad in my opinion. Okay. Well, I appreciate everyone's opinion for sure. Um, Alan says, I didn't realize men was in italics. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Mark says, Shalom. Shalom, Mark. Good to see you. Okay. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to wrap it up now. And uh, again, tomorrow we'll pick it up. Uh, we'll pick it up where we left off. And uh, so we will, let me just see here. Tomorrow we'll wrap up the book of Ezekiel. We'll get, we'll, we'll read from uh, chapters 43 to 48. So Lord willing, tomorrow will be the end of Ezekiel for us. After that will be Joel. And after that will be Daniel, Ezra, um, Haggai, Zechariah, and finally Esther, and and I'm we're I'm trying to aim aim it so that we get to, we get to Esther uh, around the time when Onia comes on to share his uh, his work when it comes to the book of Esther, so it kind of uh, synchronizes. Okay, so we got we're gonna get through a lot just in the next uh, you know week and a half week week and a half so. It's going to be awesome, as always. So you guys, again, are awesome. Sergeant R, good to see you, brother. Long time no see. Hope everything is well with you. Okay, so anyway, uh, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up. And tomorrow, Lord willing, same time, same place, 7 p.m. Eastern, wrapping up the book of Ezekiel. All right, guys. Alan says, uh, thank you, brother. Much love and blessings to you all. Multiplied back to you, brother. Thank you very much. I was appreciated. Vinny says, thank you, Christopher. Many blessings to everyone. Shalom. You too as well, Vinny. Thank you. Blessings multiplied back to you. Okay, as always, I pray the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you wonderful, wonderful Shalom. Amen. Amen. See you guys tomorrow.